so much. I want to invite you to go ahead and, and be seated today. Just on behalf of Margie, Evie, and Jay, Matt, Charlie, and the other family members, we just express to you how thankful and how grateful I am that you are here today to uh, support this family in uh, obviously a very, very challenging and difficult time in their life. Um, it's interesting that um, this past Sunday I preached a message here with, um, with Roland and Mindy who were here. Obviously, the children were back in the children's area, and I uh, I preached on that passage of scripture where Jesus said that my house should be called a house of prayer for all peoples. And so today, no matter who you are, or where you are in your stance or walk with God, I'm here to tell you this this morning that we've all come for the very same thing today, and that is to seek God and to find God, to seek Him, to know what He would want us to do next, to find Him so that He can give us the comfort and help that each of us need during this time. The reality is this is a difficult time, Margie. It's, it's hard. But... Here's the thing that I would want to remind all of us. Even in the midst of sadness and hurt and tragedy and pain, we don't grieve like those who have no hope. We have a hope because Jesus Christ died on the cross. And three days later, He rose from the dead. And someday... God will bring with Jesus so we just, those we just of us out during, uh, who know Christ. We, and we, and because of that, means, we can come and truly celebrate the lives of these four beautiful people today. Even in the midst of sadness, we can do that. I, I would like to uh, introduce uh, a young man Family has asked me to do this because you know there's a, a lot of uh, a lot of hurt and uh, there's a lot of noise outside of this building today and uh, a lot of things going on. But but we've come because of four beautiful people, so we are uh, setting aside that noise and we've we've made this place a refuge and. Uh, the young man that was a part of this accident has, he and his friend have become very, very close to Margie and the family. And his name is Jonathan, and Jonathan is here today. And Jonathan, I would just like for you to stand and let our people see you and recognize you today, and thank you for who you are. We are grateful. The beautiful thing about Thank you, Jonathan. The beautiful thing that we've learned about Jonathan is that he has an incredible love relationship with Jesus Christ, and because of that, Jonathan and the family have bonded together very closely. They've spent time together talking and sharing, and uh, Jonathan, thank you so much and your parents for being here and, and convey to your friend as well just our love and our support. We didn't know you, but we've been praying for you. Uh, during these last few days because I know how challenging, how difficult they are. And may the Lord just give you, my friend, incredible and unusual strength. Uh, his grace and His mercy may it just flow over you as well as this family for the rest of your days. Matt, I'm going to invite you to come and to lead us in a word of prayer as we get started uh, today. Matt is Evie, who is Mindy's sister. This is her husband, who is an associate pastor in the church in Reno, Nevada. So, Matt, you come, my friend, and lead us in a word of prayer this morning. Thank you. 
uh, just briefly before I uh, begin. The, at our church, uh, we've had the unfortunate uh, events that have happened that we've had to bury several uh, kids ourselves at our church. And the question that people always ask, and the question that Margie and I got into, that I said, hey, the number one question on people's minds was, if a child dies, how do we know that they are in heaven? And I can tell you that David and the scriptures, he was a king, he lost his baby. And he was there and he said these words and it's in our scriptures. He says, listen, he won't come to me, but I will go to him. And I am going to see my family again. I don't say that Mindy was my sister-in-law and Roland was, but I say they are because I know they're more alive today than they've ever been. And we praise God for that. So let's go to him and we'll pray to him and let's open our service that way. Father, our hearts are capable of more than one emotion. We know that. We know that on one side of our hearts we are hurting and we are devastated and we miss our family. And yet on the other side of our hearts we are rejoicing because we know that they are in a perfect place with a perfect God with you. And there is no more pain there. There is no more tears. There's no more sadness. All relationships are whole. All relationships are perfect. And they will spend eternity with you. Lord, we look forward to that day. Heaven just became a little bit sweeter to our family. This earth lost even a little bit more of that's pull. That now we long to be with you and we long for that day when you'll come back and get us or when we meet you. God, right now I pray for that peace that you promised in your word, that peace that transcends all understanding, that peace that the rest of the world doesn't understand. But we know that you are with us. We know that you said that we would, that, that we would go through storms. In this life you will have trials, but that you have overcome the world. And so Lord, help us to rest in you, help us to celebrate their life, help, help us to really celebrate the good news, which is what Roland and Mindy and Harley and Sophie live for. Lord, if there's anyone here that doesn't know you, that's never made peace with you, that doesn't have the hope that we have, I pray that they would come to know you. Lord, please be with us. Jenny, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Matt. Uh, when we met with the family the other night, they expressed the desire for us to sing today. And I know music was important, to the Settle Modern family. We had Harley and Sophie, our kids' choirs, and uh, it was just a joy to get to work with them. I don't know about Roland. I don't know if he could sing or not, but I suspect that he could. But uh, we want to take our attention today, and we want to offer this gift of song to the Lord because there's something about music that heals the heart, that takes our attention, and it gives it to the Lord. And that's where we'll find peace and hope so I'm going to invite you to stand and we're going to sing a few songs corporately. Hopefully you'll know some of these. If not, you do the best you can. As we offer our praise to the Lord, we celebrate His goodness, we talk about His character, who He is, the hope we have in Him. Our cornerstone, the solid ground that we stand on today is Jesus. Listen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. We're going to sing that again. My hope is built on this. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest prayer, but holy trust in Jesus' name. Thank you. 
said, my, my name is Volker Denko, and I'd just like to take a few minutes to talk about my friend of almost 30 years, Roland Salomon. Roland was born and raised in Ingolstadt, Germany. He signed up and joined the Special Forces of the German Army in the spring of 1986, where his and my path first crossed. We quickly became friends, since we both loved some of the same outdoor activities like running, rock climbing, hiking, white water canoeing and backpacking, amongst others. Our first weekend climbing trip together quickly turned into two, the two of us taking our love to the, for the outdoors all over Europe. We traveled everywhere, enjoying the outdoors. Every free weekend and especially every vacation, 
time you could find us somewhere hiking, climbing, or canoeing. In 1989, we both decided to become pilots and train together to obtain our German private pilot's license. And after we left the military, he after six years of service, and I after four, our paths separated. He went to Canada, and I came here to the U.S. and started flying. But not for very long, because after having worked so hard to become commercial pilots, he in Canada, and for me, here in the States, we found ourselves with our jobs. So after brainstorming and getting together, we came up with this great idea about taking a little road trip. So I was in Tennessee at the time, so I drove up to meet up with him in British Columbia, Canada, where he was flying at. And together we drove the Alaska Highway up to Canada, all the way into Alaska, stopping at every little airport that we could find looking for jobs. Since he had Canadian licenses, we looked at every Canadian airport for a job for him, and then later on as we crossed over in Alaska, I was looking. The time was not good at that time for pilots, so, but we tried hard. But, of course, as you can imagine, along the way, especially in this great country up north, we didn't miss any opportunity to get into some of the things we loved. Canoeing, hiking, backpacking. We had a great time. It was a long trip. We spent a lot of time together, and many a night we sat and talked by the campfire and under the stars. We talked about a lot of things. Because as you know, once you get to know Roland, he can talk. <laughs> but one topic was very important to me, and I wanted to tell him about it. And that was my recently found love for Jesus Christ. After we returned home from the trip, with both of us not getting a job along the way, but having a lot of fun hiking, backpacking, and doing all the things we loved. But no, no job in sight for us, but I was nevertheless very much excited, as you can imagine, that after a few months later, he told me that he also had accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Now, if you know Roland, you know that anything he does, he will pour his whole heart and soul into it. Because everything he ever did, he did it 150%. And it wasn't any different when he became a Christian. It was clear to him right away that he was going to serve God 150%. Just like everything else he does, with his whole heart and soul. And that meant to him going to the mission field, to Africa. And since he was a pilot, he immediately went to work to train to become a missionary pilot. So after extensive training and preparation, he served with MAF, Mission Aviation Fellowship in Nairobi, Kenya. But he flew all over Africa, especially also in some of those real hot spots like the Southern Sudan and other places where he sometimes got caught in the middle of civil wars. The stories he told were nothing short of amazing. Again, just like every other time, before and after, because of his hard work, dedication, and always giving everything he's got, 150%, he rose very quickly at MAF and ended up managing the whole base there in Nairobi, as well as overseeing several of the outlying bases in that area of Africa. It was also there in Nairobi that he first met his wife, Mindy, who also worked in the mission field for a different mission organization at the time. You will hear about Mindy in a minute, and what a great and amazing person she is. After serving many years in Africa, they decided to return to the U.S., get married, and start a family. Even with both of us very busy with our careers and families, we still found the time to occasionally meet up somewhere at some mountain range for an adventure trip. We went climbing, backpacking, mountain, climbing, whatever we could find. In fact, we just returned, not even five weeks ago, 
from a backpacking and mountain climbing trip to the Tetons in Wyoming. We both had a great time and enjoyed every minute of it, and it was good or even better than in the old days. I just now, today, realize how precious the time I was able to spend with Roland really was. But as tragic and horrific as Sunday's events are and were, our God gives us the assurance that Roland and his family are in a much better place today than they were one second before the accident. And we, all that are still here today, we can place our faith, our hope, and our trust in Him that He will take care of each one of us as well. In closing, Roland is the most dependable, reliable, honest, integrous person I have ever known. In fact, he's the only guy I trust with the keys to my safe and the lives of my family. Because I'm positive that he will always do what is right and honorable. Roland is a great athlete. For example, once he ran a two hour and 35 minute marathon. And for you runners out there, you know what an incredible time that is. He's an awesome, awesome husband and father. He's the best soldier I have ever served with. He's the best pilot I have ever flown with. And he is and always will be my best friend. Thank you. Okay. This is Mindy's brother who lives over in Austin. This is Jay. Obviously, he's going to share about his sister. Thank you. So being from Vegas, I think there might be odds on who's going to break down first up here, but uh, we'll see. I'll try to keep it together. But no, Mindy was my sister. She was a role model, a person of unwavering faith, and had one of the best hearts and one of the most loyal spirits. The verse that came to me last night was Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. As I tried to figure out and wrap my head around what is happening, I came up with my own theory, a little theory. Can a person love the Lord so much that he brings them home early? She has definitely moved to her eternal home in heaven to be with her Lord and Savior. So we need to celebrate the time we had with Mindy and the time that she had on this earth and be thankful for all those times we had with her and now live life to the fullest and affect others in the same way that she did. She was my sister and my best friend. She challenged me every day. And same thing with Roland. Mindy and I had so many adventures. That's what we did. We also had a time in Jackson Hole where we got stuck on a mountain in, in a thunderstorm. And that was pretty interesting. Um, we even, one night, we decided to go down into the Grand Canyon and we didn't have permits. So, in the middle of the night, we had to climb out of the Grand Canyon because we weren't able to stay down there. I remember her sitting on a rock just saying, I, I can't believe I'm going to die in the Grand Canyon. <laughs> One other time, she met me on a dental mission trip in India to help out. She was already a mission in missionary in Africa and going on a side mission trip in India. She definitely was an overachiever. So I travel a lot, and one of the things that I thought of uh, last night, uh, everyone always asks me, what was your favorite trip in your life? And I always say the safari and the Maasai Mara. After dental school, I was able to go with my sister. She came over for my um, graduation, and I was able to go back with her to Africa for a month. And, um, and that trip was great. And if you know Mindy, sometimes she can be a little cheap. She doesn't like to spend a lot of money. So we were going to go on this safari with six people, and not in a Range Rover that we should be in, but in a pop-up van, white van, with a driver. So as we're driving out five hours on a dirt road to the Mara, 
but the first village would come along, there's a bunch of kids, and they come running up to the van, and I start taking pictures of them. Well, then they start throwing rocks at us and break out the windows of the van. She goes, oh yeah, you're not supposed to take pictures of the kids here because they think you're stealing their soul. Well, give me a heads up sometime. <laughs> so things go from worse to kind of worse. We get out to the Mara and we're seeing all the lions and the giraffes and the elephants and this great van that we were in gets stuck in the mud. In the middle of this great savanna, she tells me I have to get out of the van and push us out of the mud. We just passed a pack of lions about 50 yards back. The van doesn't, doesn't ever get out of the mud. Some honeymooners came by in their real nice Range Rover, and we all six jump into their honeymoon safari trip. <laughs> but this is just one story, and I could tell 15 like this. And what, what I thought about is a lot of times our trips don't go exactly the way we plan. And that is the same with life. It can throw a wrench at you, but we have to hold on to a promise. And this was her favorite verse. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. When she came back here with you guys, I've seen so many people tell us that she was their role model, that she was a great mom. And she lived her life for Christ. And um, I just want to celebrate her and realize that, remember the good times with her and try to learn from her. And like I said in the beginning, this is our time uh, to live life to the fullest and really affect others in the same way that she did. Thank you. This would be, uh, in this occasion, would be Uncle Charlie, as he's going to uh, share about Harley. And, uh, thank you so much. You bet. I don't have an iPad, so I'm going to have to go old school. There's enough room up here. I write everything down, so I'm uh, technically challenged quite a bit. So let me get to my spot and get started. Um, my name is, uh, good morning everyone. We appreciate both the Siedlmeyer family and the Nance family. Uh, thank everyone for coming out here and taking time out of your day to uh, celebrate all four of these lives. Uh, very precious. Uh, good morning, my name is uh, Charlie Lumpkin and I'm Roland Siedlmeyer's brother-in-law. I am married to his sister, Angelica. We've been married for 27 years. And I am privileged to be Harley's uncle just like many of you are. I've never been in this area before, but the support this community has shown us is truly unbelievable. From the neighbors, to the fire department, the police department, this church, the district attorney's office, Harley School, all the everyday citizens here and elsewhere have treated me and my family and the Nance family beyond any expectations that I had. I would be specific in saying every name and organization, but that would take me about 30 minutes and that would upset Jay pretty much because he's uh, made it quite clear about timeliness. Right, Jay? And Jay, by the way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose the bet. I can promise you that. I wanna share with you a few stories that were shared with me um, from both families. The first story I'd like to share with you is an incident that happened about two years ago when Angelica and I went to Germany uh, and Rowan and his family were also there in Germany. At the same, we were all staying together with her father. Several times during this stay, Angelica and I would watch Harley and Sophie play on the kitchen in the dining room area on the floor with their cars with different toys. Uh, and on, on this particular occasion, Harley was 
controlling the amount of toys Sophie was playing with. Can you imagine that? Go figure, right? He's trying to control the cars, and he's telling her, you can play with this one, this one, but I'm going to play with these ten, you know, and he's controlling everything. And, you know, Sophie's resistant, but she's going along with it. She, she's probably been down this road before. So this is going on and on for a little while. And as many as you know, Harley loved to talk. <laughs> when Roland looked at me when I met Harley and, and Harley was going on, he looked at me and he goes, you know, Charlie, Harley really likes to talk. And I said, you don't have to tell me that. I can, we can all see that Harley loves to talk. Um, so you can imagine that to, and to a certain point in this uh, debate those two had on the dining room floor right there, playing with their toys, that uh, Sophie kind of had enough. She listened to Harley rant on and on and on, and then finally she, I'll never forget this, and, and my wife wanted me to bring up this particular story. Sophie looked right at Harley, and she said, you're not the boss of me. You're not the boss of anybody. <laughs> Harley just completely <laughs> speechless. Completely speechless. With his mouth open like this. My wife looked at me, Angelica looked at me and said, well, I guess you told him. <laughs> I want to jump in my, in my speech to you, and I want to tell you a little bit about this uh, look that you see. I spoke to Miss Nance, uh, also known to Harley and Sophie as uh, Grandma Margie. Um, in this picture right here, she said, uh, I, we, we all spoke, I got stories from as many of the family members as I could because I wanted to share those and not just be my stories, one of their stories. But this picture, Miss Nance described this as Harley's I'm not ready for you right now. I have a feeling some of you have seen this look before, but that is the look. Like I said before, Miss Margie Nance, also known to uh, Sophie and Harley as Grandma Margie, expressed to me that Harley and Sophie loved to visit her and Mr. Nance, also known as Grandpa Johnny, in Las Vegas, and they love to swim in their swimming pool. It's one of their favorite things they like to do. During a two-week stay at their house in Las Vegas, Grandpa Johnny, Grandma Margie, Sophie, and Harley were all having dinner at the dining room table. Well, Harley finished his meal first. And he wanted to get up from the dinner table. Harley was asked, what he's doing? What are you doing? And Harley stated, quote, Mommy says we don't have to stay at the dinner table. <laughs> Grandpa Johnny responded quickly and sternly that he was the boss of this house. <laughs> now you get where the boss comes from. Imagine that, huh? That he was the boss of this house and Harley was going to stay seated at the table until everyone was finished eating. Well, about 10 minutes went by and of course this felt like 10 hours to Harley. Right? That's the way it goes. Probably 10 years. And finally, Grandpa Johnny asked Harley to pass a bowl of uh, a vegetable or something. Like, was it broccoli? Okay, to pass a bowl of broccoli. Harley obliged, and as he handed the bowl to Grandpa Johnny, he said, Just take one piece. <laughs> Miss Nance told me, she began to laugh hysterically because Harley could not wait another second to get off that table. Jay Nance, Harley's uncle, shared with me a, a story. Not a story, but just a thing that kind of uh, made a light bulb go off. And I wanted to say something that, uh, that Sophie and Harley also loved to go to his condo in Austin, Texas, where he had a community pool. And again, these kids, and most kids do, but these kids really love to swim in the pool. And Jay expressed that to me. He laughed as he recalled Harley and Sophie would call his apartment Uncle Jay's Hotel. <laughs> I thought that was really cute. Uncle Jay's Hotel. Only kids can come up with stuff like that. The final story I want to share with you was 
explained to me by Harley's uncle Matt. And this picture right here will make all the sense in the world when you hear the story. Matt said that Harley and Sophie were operating this lime green Jeep. It's one of those battery operated Jeeps and Harley was driving around and Sophie was obviously in the passenger seat as you can see. And Harley, I guess, was just becoming familiarized with how to operate this Jeep. And as you can only imagine, lots of stopping and going and heads going back and forth and sideways. And as Sophie sits on the passenger seat, she is just becoming so frustrated. She's telling Harley he doesn't know how to drive. She wants out. I don't want any more of this. You don't know what you're doing. Isn't it amazing? Even at that age, they know. What so she was giving him a, a, a hard time. And as the drive continued, I guess they hit a curb. And I think that was the straw that broke the camel's back on Sophie. And this picture right here was taken shortly thereafter. They both look pretty exhausted right there. Don't they? <laughs> they both look really exhausted. I'm going to close by saying that in those of you in here, if you don't know, my mouth's getting a little dry, so I apologize. I should have brought some water up here. Superheroes. Harley loves superheroes. For those of you that know Harley, either through being a relative or a friend, or whatever way you knew him, I can almost guarantee you knew that in some way, shape, or form. He loved Spider-Man. I saw the Incredible Hulk over here many times. I've seen it, and there it is again. Batman. The list goes on and on. There's a cape right up here. And if you knew Harley, he really believed he was a superhero. He really did. And Harley, right now, you're the ultimate superhero because you're an angel in heaven. We love you. Debbie, this is uh, Amy's sister, in case you didn't know. She's going to share with us a picture of Sophie for us today. Thank you so much. So many times I, I practiced on the way up here, just saying it from the heart. No, I'm not going to lie. I am a girl. <laughs> and so, um, so I'm going to read something to you that I wrote and uh, just little stories of us. But Sophiana was an amazing, beautiful little girl. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sophie was an amazing, beautiful little girl. She was our little princess, as my mom would say. She loved to play dress up, and she would have all of her stuffed animals out having a party, or they were on a mission to build something, help someone, or just create new adventures. Sophie loved animals, and I've heard so many stories from many of you about how Sophie loved your dogs at your house, how she would love to play with them or just chase them around and love on them. She loved to walk them. She just, she loved animals. Their last visit to Reno, we surprised them by going horseback riding. And when she got on that horse, her face lit up with pure joy because she was a cowboy, a cowgirl. She loved horses. And Sophie, Sophie had a knack for making you laugh when you least expected it. When tensions were high, when everybody's furious or upset, Sophie could cut, cut the tension real easy with just remarks. She had a wit about her, just like her brother. And one of my favorite stories was on a Sunday morning, we were all at my 
my mom's house, Grandma Johnny, I mean Grandpa Johnny and Grandma Margie's house. And we were getting ready for Sunday morning church. Sophie had a, Mindy had laid out two dresses for Sophie as she does every Sunday. And we, we got to see that when we got to their house this week, the second dress on the floor. She lays out two dresses and gives Sophie a choice. A or B, no more options, just pick one. Just pick one. Well, Sophie did not want to get dressed. She didn't want to wear either of the dresses or any dress. And Mindy was getting upset because we were getting to be late. And she, she yelled, Sophie, just pick one, pick one. I don't want to wear it. I don't want to wear it. Sophie, why don't you want to wear it? <laughs> because I have to get busy in it. You have to get busy? <laughs> yes. All you say is twirl, twirl, twirl. I don't want to wear it. <laughs> we were so late. We were so furious and like running around. And when she, and she yelled and she had her head going twirl, twirl, twirl. <laughs> So dramatically, it just cut the tension and we laughed hysterically. Like I said, she had a wit to her. So, she, um, lastly, I just want to tell you about Sophie and her best friend, Harley. She loved her brother more than anything in the world. She could not be without him at all. Don't get me wrong, they're siblings. They can fight, and they can fight better than most siblings, to be honest. <laughs> but they could not be apart. Since Harley was older, he was doing things that Sophie wasn't able to do yet. But that didn't stop her from trapping. They would climb trees, ride bikes, color inside the lines, which was a huge success. And she wanted to stay up with him in all that he did. And I remember Mindy calling me from Volker's house one day, and Volker had a wall that was, it was bricks or rocks, and Harley was scaling the wall to climb it just like his papa did. And Sophie was standing on the first rock, just yelling at him, just stop, stop, because <laughs> she couldn't keep up. And then in his spare time, she was going out there and practicing so that the next time they would go out, she could climb that wall with Harley. At three years old, she learned to swim, and they loved going to grandma's and going swimming. She would ride her bike to drop off Harley, and as all the school teachers know, they'd ride there and they'd ride home every day. She always waited for her brother to get home from school, and she hated to see him go. She loved her brother, and he loved her. Sophie, we will miss your smile, your beauty, and your adventurous heart. We will miss you and your brother's crazy schemes and laughter. But I can't wait to see our little princess in heaven. guys share with us today. Stan and Janine, why don't you come as an integral part of uh, this family's life. So thankful for your investment to a lot of the younger families, couples in our church. So thank you so much for coming and share. <coughs> Good morning, and as Pastor Larry said, I'm Stan, and this is my wife, Janine. And a year ago, the church created an adult Bible fellowship group uh, called Parents of Preschoolers, and Janine and I were privileged to be the leaders of that group, and Mindy and Roland joined that group right at the beginning. And I remember when I first heard their testimony, how impressed I was, uh, especially uh, both of my sons, our sons, are pilots, and our oldest son had, uh, had aspired to be a missionary pilot. And so he and I had a lot to talk about, and every Sunday uh, he would be the first one to show up, 
and we'd wait for the other people to get out of the class. He would get in there with me and we'd set up the tables and we'd cut up because he had quite the sense of humor. He was a typical husband and in, in, in doing that, what I mean is, he constantly gave our, our class uh, things to laugh at. Uh, for example, recently Mendy began to tell a story. We are going through disciplining children and we had just watched a video and it was Mindy's turn to, to say something and she started to uh, start to tell her story and uh, in his typical German accent he says, that's not right. <laughs> and she turns and looks at him with a frown and, and says, uh, look, I'm telling the story. And so she begins to continue the story and not phasing him at all, he just says, well, go ahead, but it's wrong. <laughs> Our groups had several events that we got together outside of class, and uh, one sweet one this past summer was one of our members threw a swim party, and all of us were there. It was pretty hot this summer, and um, I was the lifeguard, so the parents could visit and talk, and I was watching all the children in the pool, and uh, Roland was there, and he's standing there, and I watched him as a loving father. Uh, Harley kept running around saying, watch me, Papa, watch me, Papa, and he'd be splashing and trying different things. And I watched him with patience, and he grabbed Sophie, and he got in the pool, and he walked to the deeper end. And he was holding her gently while Harley kept splashing and jumping all around him. And he didn't yell at her, but he just put his hand to shield the water splashes from Sophie. And it really touched me. We have prayer and praise reports in our group. And two weeks ago, Mendy gave a praise report and said, we've been praying for Roland. And I want to uh, have a praise here that uh, he retained his German citizenship and he got approval. And that was a big deal. And she says, now I want to have a prayer request because he's going to begin uh, his American citizenship process. And he was supposed to start filling out the paperwork this week. And I was reminded of Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 through 21. Let me read these for you. Paul says, Brothers, join in imitating me, and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many, of whom I have often told you, and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and their glory and their shame with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. And from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like His glorious body by the power that enables Him even to subject all things to Himself. Roland had already assured his citizenship in heaven when he trusted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And this past Sunday afternoon, he went home to his true eternal home as a legal citizen of the kingdom of heaven. I am Janine Weber. As I prayerfully considered what I would share about Mendy, I couldn't help but consider what she would have me share. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, she would have said, for goodness sake, don't tell them about me. Tell them about Jesus. She would never have felt worthy of the things I'm about to say about her. But I hope she'll forgive me. Many reasons why in a relatively short period of time she touched so many people here. And why the family of Crossroads has a hole in its heart today. Mindy and I met here in January of 2014 in a newcomer's Bible study just down the hallway over there. And it was during those first few months that I watched her suffer loss after loss and blow after blow. But although her knees buckled at times, her faith never wavered. And once the air returned to her lungs, she began to do what came so naturally, look for ways to serve others. That's what Mindy did. She served. 
She served children here in a number of capacities. But she didn't just take care of the children she served, she cared for them. And she cared for their parents. And whenever she had opportunity, she pointed them to Jesus and shared her love for him in every smile and every hug and every selfless act. Serving came naturally to Mindy. But in these last months, I had an opportunity to come alongside her as she began to feel God's call to step out in faith and do what, to her, did not come naturally. Lead. She became burdened this past summer with prayer. And as she sought to have a more intimate and meaningful prayer life herself, she wanted desperately to lead others to do the same. She did just that within the MOPS leadership team. And that vision, no doubt coming from the heart of God himself, has also led to our offering two ladies Bible studies this semester, whose theme is the power, purpose, and passion of prayer. But the last conversations we had were centered around her growing desire to lead a Bible study, but also her fear that she wouldn't be seen by other women as having anything to really offer them. Well, anyone who knows me can probably guess what I said to that. What wonder she had in her eyes when I affirmed what all of us knew already. We knew she had something very special, something that could only come from the Spirit of God shining from within her. Something so genuinely sweet, so humble, and so Christ-like, a quiet yet passionate pursuit of the Savior she loved so much that anyone with eyes to see and a seeking heart wanted that for themselves. Yes, she had much to offer women because her love for him was evident in everything she did, everything she said, in every gentle touch, and with every conversation where her eyes looked so intently and warmly into yours that you felt like you were the only one in the room. So Mendy served here. She served in ways that in all honesty, many of us are only now realizing. Because she did it so naturally and with no fanfare. But Mindy also led here. And although she had little time to do that in any official capacity, she did it every single day of her life as she modeled Christ before us. And after all, that is exactly the way she would have wanted it. I loved her. I'll miss her. But by God's grace, because of our faith in Jesus Christ, I know I'll see her and Roland and Harley and Sophie again. And Mindy would hope with all her heart and soul that you will too. Surrounded by your glory, what will my 
heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? When that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun, I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine. For it all to give me still Will I stand in your presence For to my knees will I fall Will I sing hallelujah Will I be able to speak at all I can only imagine Yeah, I can only imagine talk about Harley and Sophie and um, even a couple of Sundays ago uh, Sophie's teacher in Sunday school was just talking about uh, creation and God made the heaven and the earth and someday we'll get to be with God and Sophie looked up and said what's he waiting for um, we can talk about those stories until we talk about the story that is Mindy's story and his family's story, today will not be complete. People will say some of the nicest things, Margie, 
and, and, and they'll say, your kids are in a better place. And we believe they are in a better place. But there is so much confusion about how to get that better place. There's always been confusion about that. When Jesus Christ was coming to the end of his earthly life, he had been trying to tell on three occasions, he told his closest friends, I'm going to go to Jerusalem, I'm going to suffer, and I'm going to die. And they never quite grasped it. He talked about that he was going to go to be with his father. They still did not quite get it. And to this day, many, many people are confused on how to get there. But this is the completion of the story that makes today so good and so special. Because Jesus himself said this, guys, that's my version. Don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If, if I'm going to go there, I'm going to build a room, many rooms. And when I do that, I'm going to come back and I'm going to receive you to myself. That where I am, there you can be also. And one of the guys that had been so close to him asked the question, well, where are you going and how do you get there? And Jesus made one of the most famous statements that people had used for a long, long, long time. Jesus said, well, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And no one can get to the Father except through me. Mindy and Roland served faithful lives as missionaries. Surely all missionaries ought to get to go to heaven, right? Harley and Sophie were precious little children. And by the way, let's never measure someone's life in terms of years. Let's measure it in terms of quality. Are, are they in heaven today because of a tragic accident and that's just what happens to children. No, this is a story of a good God. It's not a story of being a missionary and it's not a story of being a child. It's the story of Jesus Christ. And today, there's only one way. Only one way. And I know there's debate, but I'm convinced that God's Word is authoritative and it's true. And God says through Jesus Christ, His Son, there's only one way to get to heaven. And that's through Christ, through what Jesus Christ did. And I, I would imagine today this is a room full of wonderful, kind, good people. But not one of us in this room today will make it to be with the Father in heaven because of our goodness. We can only make it because of the grace of God through Jesus Christ. Bottom line. And so today, yes, I am convinced that Eddie and Jay, your, your sister, and family, they're doing wonderful. But it had nothing to do with their good works and their good life. It had everything to do with the goodness of a great God. And I, I want to I want to plead with you on behalf of Margie who understands what I'm saying and she was cheering me on this week when we talked about you've got to tell people the gospel. You've got to tell people the truth. People have to know the story. And that's when I found this Facebook page, August the 2nd, to tell you my story is to tell of Jesus blessed assurance. That's the message that Mindy would leave to us today. This is, a, this is a day about Jesus Christ. I know there's a lot of stuff going on in our world, in this little Montgomery County right now with all of this. I understand that. 
but how sad it would be today if we turned our attention to that and miss the beauty of this family and miss the story that this family shared and lived. And it's not their story. It's the story of Jesus Christ who gave His life for every single one of us. He understands hurt. He understands pain. Jesus Himself wept over a friend, weeping and crying and grieving is a normal part of this. But today, I, I want you to think for just a moment and, and then I'm finished. I want you to think, do you truly know, have you embraced, maybe even a better question, have you been embraced by the gospel of Jesus Christ and His incredible love for you? Because you see, if you too someday want to spend an eternity see Roland and Mindy and those children, it'll not be because you came to church or because you're a good person. It'll be the same way they today are in the presence of the Lord, and that's through what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And so I invite you to the cross today. I invite you to Christ today. I invite you this morning to put your faith and trust just like this family did in the love of Jesus. Allow the Father to embrace you, care for you, I'm actually going to talk about this this Sunday. Where do we go from here as a church? Because as someone said a moment ago, this church has a hole in its heart today for this family because we love them. And the thing that we cling to today as a church family is Jesus Christ. He's our hope. And I'm so thankful that my wife pointed this Facebook page out to me because I don't do Facebook. But to tell you my story is to tell of Jesus. So today is about Jesus. About your faith, your trust, your accepting Him as Savior. I'm going to invite you just to bow your heads with me for just a moment. I'm going to pray. Rocky's going to come and lead a song. I'm going to escort the family over to this area we call Connection Center over to my right. And You'll have an opportunity to come over and say some kind words and love on uh, the family today. But I, I just want to invite you just to think with me for a moment about where you stand with Christ. Do, do you know Jesus as your Savior? Do you know the love of God? And I know it's so easy because it, it almost makes sense. Well, they were good. They ought to be in heaven. Yes, they were good, but they're only in heaven because of Jesus Christ. And so this morning, if you've never put your faith and trust in Christ, the Bible just says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. This is not about religion. It's not about how much you know. It's not about going to a bunch of classes. It's not about standing up or walking down an aisle. It's only about Jesus. To tell you my story is to tell you about Jesus. Those words will ring in our hearts and our ears. And so this morning, you would just in your heart say, Lord Jesus, I know that I've sinned. I can't save myself. I put my trust in you today, right now. If you mean that and you tell the Lord that, He'll honor that. That's no different than what Volker shared about Roland earlier in his life. That's no different than what Mindy did. You see, I think they served not to be saved, but because they were saved. And they couldn't help but tell the wonderful story of Jesus. That day that Mindy was kidnapped, the only name she could think of was Jesus. Jesus filled that car. Those men stopped that car for some reason, patted her on the arm, and said, Go. I don't understand.
can stories like that. They're too big for me. I just know the simple fact that Jesus Christ can change your life. He can save you. He can give you hope. He can carry you through times like this. This is probably not the first time we've heard and it probably won't be the last time. What do we cling to? What do we grip on to? Well, our bank accounts don't matter today and our investments don't. Our retirements don't. Today, the only thing we can cling to is the hope of Christ. And I invite you to do that. Just tell the Lord, Jesus, save me. Save me right now. If you'll do that, God will honor that. He's so good. He wants to do that. So, Father, I pray in Jesus' name right now for people that are here that have wondered and thought and they're good people and maybe even very religious people. Thank you, Lord, that you've made it plain and clear. It's not by our goodness, our good works, our kind deeds that we get to spend an eternity with you. It's because of your son, Jesus. The payment that he paid on the cross took our sins away. And now we can have eternal life. Thank you. Thank you that you have gone away to prepare a place for us. And if you go and you prepare that place, you will come again someday and you'll receive us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's our hope today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Rocky. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Would you stand? We're going to go out today singing one more song to the Lord. Singing of His greatness, of His might, of His power. It's good to you. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, Lord, see how great, oh, how great is our God. Sing it again, how great. How great.